Hi guys, Leslie here again. Um, after my first video, got so much positive feedback and such an amazing response, which I really didn't think was going to happen. Um, I thought I'd better come back outside and uh, do another one. So I wanted to elaborate on what I was talking about the other day, where you don't need all the proper kit to be able to do gardening. My little stick was the first item that I showed you. In front of me, looks like I've got a load of rubbish ready to go in the recycle bin. Well, it could do, but I'm gonna use all these different bits and pieces in front of me today to show you little tips that you can change these into things that we can use in the garden. So, the first one I'm gonna show you, which is my absolute favorite, if I move these other bits and pieces out of the way, is this one. So originally, it was a pot bottle, but as you can see, I've cut it in half, and then I've put a small little slit up the side. You need to be careful when doing this, because it can be quite sharp on the edges. So kids, if you're doing it, get an adult to help you. Maybe even put a little bit of sandpaper over the edges. You want to keep the lid on, and then you've got the base. So the bottom piece, you leave like that. Don't put any holes in it or anything like that. And this is what you can fit a plant into. So unfortunately this one, well, you can either use it like that, so you've just got a water reservoir, or if you want to propagate, which is what this is eventually going to be called, a little propagator, you can pop um, one of the smaller ones in. So one of these little ones that I had the other day for the tomatoes to go in will fit nicely inside, like that. Then you want to make sure, this is why we put the little slit up the side, that the top one goes inside the bottom one, like that. Now you keep the lid on because there's enough of a gap down the side here that it allows the air and the oxygen and the CO2 to get round inside. But it also creates a little biosphere inside so this is where it kind of makes clouds without making clouds so in the morning it will be completely clear by the afternoon when the sun's been on it and your little plant inside has been doing its thing it will create water droplets all around the edge then at night time all these water droplets will run down the outside of the bottle and back into the bottom again so it's recycling all the time Eventually, you'll have a lovely little plant which will have rooted away and then you'll be able to pop that on, similar to what I showed you the other day. That's the first one. Now a lot of us, after stop piling all that loo roll, gonna have a lot of these little babies. These are brilliant as biodegradable pots. What you wanna do, get your scissors. Kids, be careful. You wanna cut about two centimeters up the side four times try and make them equal like that which makes little flappy bits fold these over not completely over like this flatten it inside like that and then what I like to do is use a little bit of masking tape if I can tear it off Stick it down like that. There you have one little pot, which you can then fill up with compost and use for planting. So that's number two. Now another thing that I like to keep is all the little jars. In here you can see there's some sweet pea seeds. So I've found that if you put seeds in envelopes and you leave them in your greenhouse, the slugs and snails like to eat the envelopes and then your seeds go everywhere and you can't figure out which one is what. So jars are really good for storing seeds. The other one which is really easy is your tins. From your beans, your peas, sweet corn, anything like that. And they work really well as little planters. But again, kids, please be careful because they will have sharp edges. So adults, you might want to just get a little bit of sandpaper and just go round the edges for adults as well actually because it's going to be really sharp so you you can use these as little planters or you can again pop 
even your little toilet roll one inside that you've already got your plant in and pop it inside and then you've got your own little planting reservoir so it'll hold the water in the bottom and if your toilet roll gets a little bit soggy it's not going to flop and go everywhere the next one that i like oh, my coriander's just fell over no sorry parsley not coriander is the newspaper one a lot of you may already know how to do this but this is where our tin comes in handy again so i'm going to show you this one my potting bench isn't big enough for the amount of stuff that i've got in there so piece of newspaper i have these for my guinea pigs because it lines their cages also really good for making uh, firecrackers out of and starting those another tip from my granddad when i was younger Right, fold your newspaper in half, so you've got your strip like this. You want your tin can on this edge. Roll it up, like that. And again, this is where your masking tape comes in. If you haven't got masking tape, use a bit of sellotape, but don't forget that sellotape isn't biodegradable. I think masking tape is, don't hold me to that. But it's, it's definitely better anyway tape up the side and this is good as well because you can then use the masking tape to write on the side as to what you've got in your tin uh, not in your tin sorry in your pot talking about tins is inside so you want to be folding it down wrapping it up like a little present and then again a little bit of masking tape This is a tricky bit very tricky bit actually getting the tin back out from inside it might have to peel that off and poke it out there you go one of my concentration faces again there you go like that pop your hand inside just firm up the bottom and there you go take it back up again there you have two newspaper pots now one of my other favorites which you can use jars for again is using them as vases now I've got a little orchid here uh, and this is a phalaenopsis orchid I don't know if you know or not but the roots generally like to be out so that the sunlight can get to them so when you buy them in the shops and they're in the ceramic pots it doesn't do the orchid so much good so I when I ever get an orchid I pop it into a jar or a glass vase and as you can see it creates a little water reservoir down the bottom and the orchids can then draw up as much water as they like now some people say you shouldn't leave your orchids in water which is true which is why I leave it so it's underneath and then the orchid can draw up as much as it likes so it's not actually sitting in water it's got a reservoir underneath now one of the other things that I like to use, which actually another one of my friends has told me about recently as well, so thank you Tom, is using milk bottles. So what I've done here, you can see as I've flattened the milk bottle, and I'm going to make some plant labels. So again, kids you might need help from adults with this one. Even I might need some help from an adult with this one. Now, every part of the milk bottle can be used. So the bottom piece that you've just cut off can be used as a little plant pot holder. So you can get one or two in beside and use it as a little water reservoir again. Or you can pop, pop holes in the bottom of it and make it into a longer planter. Then this piece, no lid on it, little handle. I'm going to cut the next piece off. Ooh. You can see I'm really skilled at doing this. Nothing has to be perfect in the gardening world. 
you can see that this definitely isn't perfect what I'm doing but it's fun and you're always learning right so if you've got your piece of your plastic from your milk bottle like this you can then literally just cut strips and it's up to you some people like to have them so that they're like a proper plant label with the point on it makes it a little bit easier when you're popping it in the pot or so you've got it like that or you can leave it as a strip and then the best thing to use what i've found ooh, is a sharpie to write on with them or a more of a charcoal-y style leaded pencil because if you don't and you keep watering them it can fade off in the it can fade off in the sunlight if it just went black my battery's dying so i'm sorry And then this piece, you can either use in bigger pots. So if I show you over here, in my greenhouse, my lovely money tree, you can pop it in the side as a water reservoir and fill it up. Or you can just use it as a funnel. Brilliant as a funnel. Or again, if you use a, where did it go? There it is use the lid that came with it it can be a little scoop scoop night compost I like to recycle as much as I can and as you saw the other day I used a forever roche tray to put underneath my plant pots with all my little seedlings in so if there's anything else in the in the kitchens that you can think of like i use like like to use big sweet tubs they're really good as bigger planters for tomatoes or peppers or maybe even cucumbers or in here i've also got like an old salad pot which is great to use underneath an old uh, not underneath an old pot but underneath a pot which has got another plant in um, my mum's got one inside at the moment which is underneath a uh, indoor jasmine but anything else you think of have a go see what happens nothing ventured nothing gained every day is a school day so i hope i've ignited your imaginations this one's been a little bit longer than the last video but if you stay to the end thank you very much for your support and i'm hoping to do a few more please wash your hands when you go back indoors not only because of everything that's going on at the moment but when you've been outside you still don't know what other germs and nasties are out there so wash your hands and make the most of what you've got for the time and what you're going to be spending in your garden